I could really summarize this very long video in two words. Dig everything. All right, it is time for the Target ID Bible for the MindLab Xterra Pro. Everything that's covered in this video, you, you got the cliff notes for. I wrote a book and it could be downloaded from my website at a very reasonable price. So everything that's covered in this video is covered in this book. And I realize this video goes long. But what's especially valuable is a review of the Target IDs. This is actually one from the Manticore, but um, it, it summarizes everything that we go over, and you could easily page through it and uh, get a feel for what each number gives you. But I'm not holding out on you. Everything is going to be covered in the video. It's just you have all of the notes in one place if you purchase the book. The link to the book is going to be in the video description and also on the pinned comment for this video. One other thing that's really important for the sake of consuming a lot of information, this video is a lot of information. Let's take a look down here. This is from my Manticore video. I've done this with other detectors too. Notice that there's chapters. And if you open up the video description, you could zoom to the different chapters. Uh, in the video based on what you are interested in. This one will have the same. We have all sorts of fun stuff over here. We've got some gold. We've got some silver buttons, uh, bullets, old coppers, silver, reals, and, uh, you know, more modern silver and clad. Oh, and these things. Oh, these are horrible. And these are horrible. And uh, we're going to measure them here. And we're going to put this on our board. And as you can see, you have the number one here. And it goes all the way up past what we need. But we're going to really study the target ID of the Xterra Pro. Now I should mention I'm gonna be in park mode and uh, I am going to make it all metal. There are some people in this world who like to push buttons, you know, notch things out on a metal detector. I think by the end of this video, it will be clear why I barely ever touch the notch where I notch out numbers. I don't do that. You'll see why in this video. Let's start with a teachable moment. You have a barber dime over here. Now this too is a barber dime. And look at the difference. This is paper thin. And this one is pretty full. Not mint condition, but pretty full. And one thing you have to keep in mind, let's do the one that's full first. We'll call that a 79. Now let's do the one that is paper thin. Big difference. So the condition of the coin definitely plays into the ring up. Hey Merrill, could you tell me the target ID of a barber dime? It's not that simple. The condition of the coin plays into the target ID. Now, keep in mind, not all of these are going to be in mint condition. I'm going to try to find the ones that have the best condition for the sake of this video, but some of it I just have not found enough. So keep that in mind uh, when watching this. And more importantly, when you're pulling stuff from the ground, if you're expecting, well, I, I know that a barber dime rings up at 80. Well, not all barber dimes are the same. Another teachable moment before we start, target ID is a measure of conductivity. And silver is the most conductive metal. And sometimes silver is put right next to gold. This is both 925 and 10K. Now, the higher conductor, which is the silver, is going to win out over the gold. Watch this. 
this one has more silver than gold in it and that plays into it but uh, the presence of the higher conductor will raise the target id now shape plays something into it also we have a copper bell right here and let's start by bringing it up just like that we're in the 70s now we're going to turn this to the side Fifties, sixties. Now we're gonna do it this way. Fifties, sixties. Turned again. Turned again. Turned again. So it's confusing the metal detector in terms of the surface that it is hitting. All right. Next teachable moment here. We have a silver chain nine two five right here. And that is 35 grams of silver. And we're going to put this uh, silver coin right here. 31 grams. Now, there's a difference. The chain, it moves, it's bendable. This, it, it is dense. You know, it is together all in one piece. A little bit lighter than this. But let's see how both of these ring up. Oh, I got a food delivery. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, I'm on a diet. Oh. Okay, so anyway, let's start out with this. You could imagine it's gonna be a high number. 96, 97. We'll call that a 97. Now remember, this is 35 grams of silver 925 this one is 31 now let's ball this up low 40s more silver here which is the highest conductive metal on the planet and you have dense silver here so if it's dense it's going to ring up higher and remember that with chains Next teachable moment, alloy counts. We both have, these rings are both 14 karat gold. This one is rose gold though, and meaning you have some copper that is mixed in. So let's take a look at the weights. This one is seven grams. And let's look at the ring up of this. It's about 60, 61. Now let's look at the weight of this one, of course, my scale turned off. Back on grams. So this one is five grams, a little bit lighter. 18, we'll call that 18. All right, next teachable moment. So let's take a penny here. I have them stacked and for a reason. So we got a penny. 80. Fine. Okay, now let's take a second penny. Let's put it right on top. So it's together just like this. Eighty-seven. Let's take a third penny. All of these are the same. They're just regular, you know, memorial pennies before the zinc era. Oh, we'll get to those. Three together now. 90. Um, let's add a fourth one. Let's see. The thicker that this is, the higher that it gets. It seems to plateau. Let's put all of these together. And all of these, despite, you know, I know that color looks a little bit whitish. That's 1978. All of these together. And let's pack them nice and tight like that. It flashed 98. So uh, there's something to be said about the thickness, but this is strange. Okay, so you got four super high conductors right here. Okay, these are 
dollar coins. This was from 2020. This was bought. Got a 97 here. And this is a Morgan dollar right here. 96, 95. Now let's put these two together. Reading it as iron, just the two. I did a short where I had all four together, but it just overwhelms it, I guess. And reads it as iron. So I don't know if that's the algorithm or what, but um, yeah, maybe over a certain number is just like, okay, that's gotta be iron. Um, <laughs> not that you see a scenario like this out in the field, but that's just something to be aware of. Now it's time for the VDIs of American coins. Just FYI, as we go through this section, my book has notes on the VDIs or target IDs of American coins. All right, so it's time to dive in. Let's take a look at a few different pennies, okay? And let's get a general target ID. 80. 80. 80. 79. I'm not surprised by that. 79, 80. 81. 82, 83. And this one, 1978. I have seen on all machines, I've done this Many times I've seen the greatest variance in all types of pennies. For the sake of our board, we put pennies at 78 through 82, but uh, generally you see them at 80. So I just did the same for nickels and this one rang up a little bit lower than the other ones. It's just a 1970. <laughs> 27, I would say. And the other ones rang up at 28. I just tested a bunch of clad dimes. They were all very consistent. 80. That's where I'm going to put it on the board. So we got clad quarters here. And I got 88 and 89. This one was 89. And these two were 88. bit lower 88 89 we have kennedy halves neither one of these have any silver in them uh, we had a 99 and a 74 so and these were consistent both were 93 all right before we get too far away i just i just checked all of these and the majority of them were in the 60s 65 but again Look at this one. Zinc penny. Great. Here's another one. 20s. 50s. 40s. 40s. So we're going to say 25 all the way up. Twenty-five to sixty-six. <laughs> All right, it is time to go Indian head penny. Now these were the coins that were left over from the uh, Manticore Target ID Bible that I did right before this. Uh, so these are in a range, and uh, this is a uh, fat Indian head right here, and the flying eagle which I have and I have to dig out. It rings up just like this one. Please take my word on this one. So fat Indian head pennies, we'll call that a 43, and that can apply to Flying Eagle. But there's a whole range, like let's go here, let's do this one. We'll 
call that a 68. And there's a whole range in between. Down to the low 40s. fifties. So this is a wide range too. Um, we will call that 42 to 68. All right. Our board is starting to take shape. Go, go, go. Now Buffalo nickels. So these were a uh, pretty narrow range. 26 Come on. We'll call that 27. Twenty-nine. And some of these are just wild. Like this is one that's not really in tremendous condition. You don't get a date on it. But it's up to twenty-nine. Okay. 26 to 29, it is. Lady V in the house. Let's check some V nickels. 23. 25. 25 up to 26. 27. 23 to 27. Okay, we will preface shield nickels by saying these are an absolutely fantastic condition. <laughs> They're really not. Let's see what we got. Twenty six. Twenty six. Twenty four. We'll call it twenty four, twenty five, twenty six. All right, it is time to go half dime. These things are tiny. Sixty-eight. Sixty-eight. Time to go rosy. Eighty-four. Eighty-three. 82. We'll say 82, 83, 84. And you should observe the same thing with Merck's. 82. 83. 84. 84. Now, barbers and older silver should usually be a little bit lower than where we have the uh, silver mercs and rosies. And again, 80 is the most common number for clad dimes, but we should see barber and seated in here. Let's test to see. Lower, 76. 81, 82, 80, 80, 80, 81, 79. I'm actually gonna take the 76 out because this one is, it's on the thin side. But I put barbers at 79 through 82. So I tested a range of seated dimes. 78. 78. 81, I would call that. 
So we're gonna call the seated range 78 to 82. Cap bust is my big white whale, so I'm waiting to get one of those. You know, I forgot about uh, war nickels. And uh, these ones, uh, the ones during the war, have a certain amount of silver in them, and they ring up accordingly. So we got a 30 here. <laughs> Look at this. So this... 1943 in the 60s back to the 20s 60s 50s honestly this could be anywhere in this range i've seen them anywhere in this range they're wild cards very much like uh zinc pennies uh, but we're going to put a few down on the board. So we got silver Washington quarters here. They're pretty consistent. Ninety ninety one. We'll still call that ninety ninety one. One's going to be at ninety. One's going to be ninety one. Barber quarter. I've got one in good condition, and the other is toast. So it would be off. 87. Two seated quarters. Call that 90. 88. That's all we got. So 88 and 90, it's going to be. I'm sure 89 would be covered, but um, 88 and 90 it is. Oops, standing Liberty quarters. Let's check that. Take my word for it, 88, 89, 90. I'm trying to save you some of the beeping. All right, now we're doing Kennedy halves and they ring up. 94. We'll call this one 95. Dollar coins. 89. 8889. Walking Liberty were 93 and 94. Franklin half was consistent at 94. Barber half was consistent at 94. This was a uh, Diwali coin, it's a Hindu holiday, and um, we'll call that 97. This uh, dollar coin uh, rang up also 97. Morgan dollar. We'll call that 96. Eisenhower dollar was consistent at 96. Seated half. Call that 93 this is a little bit worn all right we got a whole bunch of coppers from state coppers to large cents to uh tokens all sorts of uh interesting coppers here's one of the uh tokens and i think what we're gonna do is we're gonna ring them up first and then uh, put them down on the board. There's different types, there's different widths. Like for instance, a King George, you know, this was actually um, a King George and it is like really thin, not just because it's been in the ground, but just it's thinner than the average uh, large scent. So we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at that on the board. So the coppers have a pretty wide range and they start at 64 and it was that King George that was the lowest. We have another King George here and 75 we have a uh, state copper and that's a French centine and some of the thinner large, um, large scents, some of the older ones, 
uh, tend to be in this range right here. Actually, this is another state copper. But again, look, this is one of the thinner coins. And um, basically, as it gets thicker, this is actually a Russian Kopec right here. But look at the difference in thickness. That is a thick coin. So uh, density, thickness, uh, width of the coin, you know, that is that definitely counts here. This is just my two cents, but let's see what this rings up as. Call that 72. Yeah, I've never found a capped bus dime. That is driving me crazy. Somehow I've managed to find three trimes. Got lucky with that. Um, there's one that rings up a lot lower than the others. I think it's this one. This is like really thinned out. 58. No, it's this one. 43. And 58. All right. So we are actually... No, we're not through the coins. I almost forgot the reals and the half cents. Let's do that. After that, we are done with the coins. We're getting on to the fun stuff. Half cents. I actually have three. And um, they ring up. 77, 73, 75. All right, we got four half reals, and let's see what they ring up as. Real one, 78, ooh, 66. Sixty-two, seventy. One reals. I've got three, and they ring up. Seventy-nine, seventy-eight. Could have been seventy-nine. Ooh, all three. Seventy-eight, seventy-nine. Two reals, I have found two. So let's see. 84. 86. This, I wish I found this. I bought this. Um, eight real. We'll call that 96. Yeah, now we're officially done with the coins. So let's move on. We will get to the gold very soon. Um, let's do buttons. I'm not gonna stand here and ring them up. Let's save a little bit of time. I'm going to ring them up, put them on the board, and uh, you could purchase the uh, PDF, uh, but I'll give you the general range, and usually it's very spread out. The VDI of buttons. All right, this is actually pretty wild. We have buttons that are coming up at the very beginning. And uh, I mean, it kind of makes sense. This one could have been a one or a two. I'm just gonna choose this because it's right in front. That's more of a two, but you also have buttons that fit in the top of the range too let's find one of the higher buttons that was here i think this was the highest button at 89 so one to 89 or two to 89 actually is the button range that we have and uh <laughs> If you're looking for a specific number for buttons, it's not going to exist. Um, there's a lot of factors that play into target ID. And especially with buttons, you see a very, very wide range. Again, you'll see close-ups of these buttons in my uh, target ID Bible, which is on my website. 
the VDI of metal detecting trash. All right, let's get the junk out of the way here. I only have one bottle cap. Bottle caps in general. Jump around, you see the negative. And really, it could be anywhere within this range. Um, we'll put this on the board. Now, some of the aluminum stuff. Here's an aluminum bottle cap. Another aluminum bottle cap. In the 70s. Beaver tail. 30s. Another beaver tail. 20s. And each one of these is uh, slightly different. Um, let's put it on the board and let's take a look. Yeah, so we have a incomplete t trash range. I put the uh, rusty bottle cap at 90. Now, moving down, we have the aluminum bottle caps, 73, 74. Rusty bottle cap at 90, that just jumps around. It could be anywhere on this board. Aluminum one's right there. Um, got a nail, 53. There was another nail that acted just like iron, but this one read at 53. And we got pull tabs, 43, 40, 36, 30, 29, 26, 22, and 21. So you could say the trash range, 21, really all the way up to 90. Um, if you're talking about aluminum foil, aluminum foil is going to be, if it's a small piece, it's going to be down here. And uh, based on the thickness of it, you know, it's going to go pretty high. But, um, you know, that's our trash range. The VDI of bullets. All right, so now we're getting into the funner stuff. Let's do bullets next. And we got some more over here that we could put in. All right, so the range for bullets, artillery, whatever you want to call it, it starts with this little guy at uh, 24, moves up to 40 and 43, and you're really starting to get higher frequency, 47, 48, 51, 52, 53. And this is the high frequency range, 72 all the way down to 59. And uh, 72 is the highest that we got, um, you know, a musket ball or a bullet. So uh, that's your range. I guess it goes from 72 all the way down to 24. And this board is filling up. Also, if you notice, the sun has moved. We've been at this all day. Please support my channel and uh, hit that like and subscribe button. But uh, we still have quite a bit to do. Let's go. The VDI of metal detecting treasure. All right, let's go. We're gonna do this, uh, some of this in groups. And, you know, interesting pieces like to this. This is not gold, um, but it's got a stone in there. Um, call that a 75. Stainless steel ring, 28. Silver DMX pendant, 62. 925 Tiffany and Company chain and pendant here. And the pendant should actually make it go up. Let's ball this up. We'll call that an 84. Tarnished silver, 82. Part of a silver bracelet, 84. All right, this one always uh, rings up super, super high. Let's see. Oh, I saw a negative number in there. That just really is bouncing. Um, I will call that a 96. This one is stamped 12K, but I don't know. I don't know about this one. going to say 79 and this is one that always rings up a little bit weird um i tested it there's some gold in it but i don't even know if it's that much anywho 79 
This one's an interesting case study. This is a 925. Uh, it's plated gold over 925, but it should ring up high because of the 925. We'll call that 85. Silver skeleton key, 81. Silver ring, 66. Silver ring, 79. Watch fob, 77. Boot plate, 70. Badge, 35. This is another ring that claims to be 14K. I'm not quite sure. It's tested at about nine. But that seems a little bit high, even for that 82. Skeleton lock, 79. Bridal thingamabob, 80. Boy Scout clasp, that is 85. Thick copper pendant, 88. Mercedes ring, 84. Silver ring, 83. Junk ring, 35. Silver ring, 79. Silver napkin holder. Silver spoon. We'll call that 93. Board is really starting to fill up. Silver spoon, 85. Silver and a little bit of gold bracelet. This is gonna be a weird one. 37, we'll call that. Silver murder weapon thingy with a weird edge. <laughs> That's not a murder weapon. Uh, 90. World War II wings. Eighty-three. Silver pendant. Seventy-two. The mouse's sword. Dang. Eh, we'll call that thirty-seven. Mexico sterling silver. I guess bracelet charm. Eighty-six. Silver hairpin. Fifty-four. Silver pendant, 85. Lantern at 50. Lantern part. Silver dog, 73. It's going to struggle with this because of the shape. Thimble. From the side, we're going to call that 37. Silver ashtray at 87. My baby crotal bell. <laughs> If you could call it that, 25. Star of David Medallion? 73. Early Matchbox Car, 61. 925 Earring. 7. Fancy buckle, 72. Pier Smed Silver Brooch. This guy actually exhibited in the uh, Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. 89. The gold-plated pineapple, 50. We still have more to go. We're making progress, and there's no gaps up high. As we get lower, the first gap that we see is at 1617. And then again uh, at 91011. And then 3456. So this will be an interesting one. We got gold on one side and we have silver on the other side. And silver is going to overpower the gold. The VDI of skeleton keys. All right, it's time for the uh, skeleton keys. Fifty-eight, twenty-two, sixty-nine, seventy-one, seventy-four, thirty-six, 22, 69, 71, 74, 36, 
silver hairpin, 60. Watch number one. Yeah, you get more erratic ring up. We're gonna call that a 62, but uh, irregularity in shape, you get more erratic ring up. But yeah, 62. Next watch. Seventy three. Isn't that wild? You could get a half cent bottle cap, silver dog, Star of David's little silver pendant, and this huge watch, all at seventy three. Religious pendant seventy six. Silver necklace and pendant. Let's ball it up some more. Seventy nine. Strange engraving on this one. Forty-three. Eighty-four. Nine two five. All three of these are old and they're made of silver. Let's go with this one first. Seventy-two. This one. I guess we'll call that 58. And the baby version. 22. Silver chain. <laughs> Man, when that's balled up. That's all over the place. Uh, I'm gonna put that at 53. Is that accurate? I am not sure. Um, that's as close as we could get with that. That's a bouncy one. 53, we'll call it. We'll have the same problem with this Pandora pendant or bracelet. That's everywhere. And you can't really ball this up. Just remember that. It's going to be bouncy. Um, <laughs> uh, come on. going up now it goes down man we'll call it 50 can't call that accurate though this one will be accurate 1930 award for baseball 93 68 silver 84 silver tiny but thick ring 94. Sterling ring at 90. This is a high one. Tiny ring, sterling. Call that 95. We got a low one, so this is 925. We'll call that 6. I think it's low because look at this and this is a teachable moment we're going to close it all the way a little bit higher call that an eight it was going seven nine heart of the ocean 65 this is a junker and it's 53 we finally got a 17 it is this earring and this pendant was a 76 sterling silver. All right, this ring is a teachable moment. You got some gold in here and you got some silver as well. And this is going to ring up high because of the silver. Call that an 88. It is time for some platinum. Ooh. 10 silver ring 87 another silver ring 85 this one is always a weird ring up let's do it from the side first it is not iron it is definitely not iron you got some sterling 
right there. Now, if you do it like this, you know, make it face the detector. We'll call that uh, 88. Composite ring. Fourteen. Board is filling up. I've been putting some stuff on. I know this video is getting long. I've been putting some stuff down that is not making the video. But again, everything is going to be in the book. And uh, please consider getting that and supporting my channel. Thimble at 31. Pendant at 83. Fat silver chain. Ooh, that's a surprise. This is balled up. Nine ten. Wow. We have another silver chain here. Eleven. Silver hairpin. Sixty-two. Silver ring. Eighty-two. Silver ring, a lot thinner. 54. Silver earring, 47. Silver ring, 92. Stainless ring, 15. Silver ring at 86. Silver ring at 91. Silver ring, 64. Silver toe ring. 26 traffic light ring <laughs> silver 84 stainless ring 16 silver ring 82 silver ring 86 this is always an interesting one 925 silver chain let me get a good grip ball it up 925 silver chain Call that a 15. All right, we are getting there. Again, I've put some of the stuff on the board and not shown it in the video. We'll give you a close up um, of every number at the end, definitely. This is an interesting one. Um, this is marked as sterling silver. I think that there's other materials in here, other metals rather. 35. Then again, the silver would overtake, but this is just low for silver. St. Christopher Little League pendant. That is an 82. Sterling ring, 28. Sterling at 14. My stainless spinner ring is uh, 12. Sterling, 73. Sterling, 87. If you're noticing, yeah, there's a wide range with the silver rings. Just looking, and we're not done yet. The lowest silver ring was this toe ring at 26. And the highest was 96. And in terms of the silver range, it goes down to 8. This is 8, 925, right there. Um, we got platinum at 10 and two chains that are silver at nine and 11. Another silver ring at 93 and an ant at 91. Get out of there. Stainless, this is a 20. Stainless, this is a 17. Silver, this is a 71. This was once the end of a fork, I think. Um, this was an 84. Sterling at 20. Sterling at 15. And another sterling at 14. So this is an interesting one. This is a friendship ring. Different colors. Now look at this. One of the lowest. Solid eight. Another sterling at 10. This one was a 59. Everything else we do from this point on should be gold. I might have missed like one or two. This one is platinum. Um, but yeah, everything else should be gold. Just giving it another quick look. This one is platinum too. All right, let's go. Let's start out with the platinum. 30. This one, chunker, 52. 
14K31. 14K. <laughs> Out of 19. Platinum. 19. 14K. 33. 14K. 44. Remember that the next time that you uh, dig a zinc penny. 10K. 14K. 14K. 18K. 32. 14K pendant. 10K. 58, 14K, 14K, that's interesting, this one has rung up higher on other detectors, hmm. that's why, it's the angle, I turn it like this, Interesting. I don't know what to call that. This is chunkier, so I'm actually going to give this the higher ring up. We'll call that a 59. 14K, 39. 10K, 21. 14K, 53. 10K, 29. Some of you have been waiting for the wrapper's pendant. Um, this is plated. And we got the blinged out religious pendant. Eight. Earring at 14. You know, I got to give a shout out to the battery of this machine. We've had it on all day. I mean, look, look at the difference in the sun right now compared to when this video started. Um, that's a spectacular battery. Anywho. This one's 14K, 13, 10K at nine. And we've got a 14K chain. I'll call that a two. All right, this ring was really controversial in the Manticore. 10K, as you could see here. When I turn it this way, there we go. That's a one. That's a one. 14K, 27. Another 14K. This one is 29. 14K and 36. 18K. Oh, 59, 18K, we'll call that one 59 also, 10K Lion, 9, 14K, 34, 10K, spooky thing. Eight, this tested at about 20K. It's really a stunning piece. Um, 22, yellow diamonds and white gold. And that is seven. Silver with gold, 74. Ruby, cut ring, 23. 14K.
Close that 31. 14K, 18. All right, we got some gold here. 14K. <laughs> That is a legit one. 10K, 14. 14K at 15. 10K at 14. This was another controversial one in the Manticore video. 10K? Well, let's see. So we're putting the, the notch on. Yeah, it would have been partially notched out too. All metal, you get it. And that's gonna be our first four. We're gonna call that a four. 14K, 14. 14K white gold, 26. 14K. Call that 12. 14K crucifix at 10. 14K, 18. This one is a six and it's 10K. 16 and it's 14k 14 and uh, this is 14k 14k this is a 30 so this is a chunker at uh, 47 14k and oh i forgot the number we'll call that 47 do you look up see if these are working or not this one is 14k wait yeah, 14K. And this is a six. 14K crucifix at six. 14K, 20. 14K, 25. 10K. Let's see. Oh, just like a zinc penny. 57. Also 10K. Call that 13, 18K, 15, let's go, we're almost there. Look at that, almost there. Go, 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 10K, oh yeah, I gotta ring it up. 25, I'm fried, 14K, 10. Mickey Mouse 10K earring. Eight. 14K, go, go, go. 18. 14K, little, little bracelet, so thin. Let's ball it up. Call that a fool. This one, 22K. Not quite 24, tested 22. Ooh, 24. You better believe we are saving my grills for last. Now this one is my weightlifting chain. It's 14K, ball it up. Call that a 12. And last, but definitely not least, my grills. Fourteen. We made it. Sun's going down. Let's take a look at this board. We got gold that is starting at one, and gold is going all the way. Up to 88, because this one is, uh, it's next to silver. We got some gold on one side and we got silver on the other side. So that one was 88. Let's take a look at the board. For those of you who are not gonna buy the book, the only gaps we really have are three and five, that's it. So we got one really light gold, um, a regular ring up for that ring. And uh, we got some buttons, gold, you want to dig those low tones, you're going to get aluminum uh, in this range like crazy. 
silver, don't be deceived. You could get silver ringing up low. It is a, it's the highest conductor, but that doesn't mean that you're not gonna see it low. In fact, 925 right here. That's the lowest silver that we have. We also have a silver chain here and here. Um, for the most part, um, stainless steel is going to ring up just like gold. You see a lot of either stainless or gold rings in this range moving up and increasing with the conductivity. You're getting some garbage in this range. You're getting the first skeleton key. There's my wrapper metal. By the book, everything is gonna be labeled. Got a lot of gold. It starts to get heavy in here. Buttons are spread out across this entire thing. Zinc, if you think you got zinc, I mean, the majority of zinc is gonna be uh, above 60, 60 to 65, but this goes to show if you're like, yeah, you know, 60 to 65, what am I giving up? You could be giving up gold. You could be giving up some really, really good stuff. Really starting to see high volume of silver in this range. Buttons, keys. I spent a day of my life on this, so please consider getting the book. It helps my channel. I reinvest a lot of that into uh, these videos to teach you. And we're moving. And now we're getting the thick silver and there's nothing higher than 97 that we saw. So I say that that is the end and I look forward to your comments uh, in the comment section and I'll answer as many as I could. Thank you for watching. So that's all folks. I think that that summarizes why it's important to uh, hunt in all metal mode and uh, to really give every signal a shot. You really got to listen because there's a difference in sound uh, for a big thick object that rings up low and a piece of aluminum foil and really metal detecting is about training your ears uh, i think that that is currently our best defense uh, or, or our best uh, understanding of what's in the ground the target id yeah that helps us inference but uh, really it comes down to sound and um you know other uh, prior experience and you want uh, all of those factors to help you make a decision. Anyway, uh, this book, uh, I hope that you uh, consider purchasing it. The link is in the video description, and uh, it supports my channel, allows me to reinvest in other metal detectors. But I want to thank you for watching, and uh, many more videos coming. Thank you, everybody.